What's up, my MS family? How you guys doing? Listen, I thought I had updated you guys, and I looked this morning and realized I did not. Since I last talked to you guys, I said I was going to have that UDS test, and um, also I was supposed to have a colonoscopy. Well, let's start with the colonoscopy. Had that done uh, to follow up with a procedure from May because I had to have... Um, my i had to have a hemorrhoid removal skin tag removal and a fissure repair Whew. let me tell you guys best surgery i ever had and i recommend it because who the pain was level 15 plus and after the surgery yeah you know you have a little pain because you done been cut and prodded and everything but you know after about two weeks it was all good, uh, but he had to go back in and do a colonoscopy because what well, he said, that's what he had to do. I don't believe he had to. He could have used a scope in the office and that didn't have to put me to sleep, but I think he just or oh, I happy. He's, he's sweetheart and he's a good doctor, but I think he just or oh, I happy. Some doctors just love, love, love their job. So he went, he looked didn't see any issue where he needs to repair anything but he did say i have internal hemorrhoids that are still giving me trouble um so just watch them i guess see what happens and that's that's the source of uh the blood that i'm seeing um and i had issues just with um you know because when you're when you're bleeding you want to make sure you um uh, and I think I said it on one of the videos before. You just make sure you keep yourself clean or whatever. Um, you know, as a female, you could wear panty liners. And if you a man and had that same surgery, ain't nobody going to know unless you tell them that you got a panty liner on the backside of your underwear because it's a, it's a saver. So, you know, bump what people talking about and your comfortability or however you say it. Listen, um, and that's, it is what it is. You know, you got to protect yourself, make sure you clean throughout the day and all that good stuff. But we'll see. You know, here it is September, about to be October. And, um, you know, it's getting a little better. It really is. Um, I'm not bleeding as much. Well, I make it seem like it's not like a lot of blood. You know what I'm saying? But the issue is not as bad as it was. It's, it's starting to clear up. And I know... Um, I read, you know, before I had the surgery, it can take up to a year before everything heals itself because, of course, they had to cut that sphincter muscle back there as well. So, you know, I know it was a longer recovery, which is fine. Now, I've had my UDS test, which is what I thought I had up uploaded, and I didn't. And, of course, what that test includes is, you know, they have to hook you up to this machine and... uh uh, so they can read certain things and, you know, they had to put a small catheter in my urinary tract and one in my, um, my, um, anal, anal area. Um, and then what they do is, um, uh, once that's done, uh, they, um, they put some electrodes on you and, uh, what that does also is give like wave pattern, uh, on the screen and, uh, as to how your bladder reacts to certain things and uh, they also put a uh x-ray machine uh that is directly um over your your bladder area and it not only takes pictures it takes videos as to what's going on because what they do is pump a dye into your bladder and it's the one um with the uh contrast uh, that helps your organs illuminate on the uh, screen. They did that and they have to fill your bladder up and um, you have to let them know, you know, when you feel your bladder is getting full, uh, when it feels like uh, you're getting to a point where you have to go to the bathroom, where you feel like, oh, you know, I think I can, you know, maybe need to stop and go use the bathroom. And then when it's really like, whoa, I'm pushing everybody out the way. I'm punching grandma 
you get out my way. I got to go to the bathroom type thing. And, you know, we went through all of that and they measured everything and you have to urinate in front of them because they have to get an idea as to what's going on. And they take pictures and videos as everything is emptying out. Um, and, uh, after that, they take you into another room to give you the results. And of course, with my results, they said that it's not that my bladder is not emptying because most people with MS, you know, their bladder just will not empty. Mine does empty, but it does not open fully for everything to come out, which I don't understand why that would cause me to have bladder pain at night and kidney pain when I lay down because my issue is not the the frequency. You know, I'd rather have the frequency and you take away the pain, but that's what they kept harping on. And I keep saying, you know, it's the pain. Is this going to help with the pain? You know, if we get that correct, and then it was like, possibly. So, you know, she recommends me to change my medication. So stop taking the oxybutin and take one called Gemsia, uh, which I'm going from 10 milligrams to 75 milligrams. And then she also want me to get Flomax. Well, listen, if you want to change my medication, the least you could do is make sure it's there when I get there because I'm two hours away. So I go to the pharmacy. There's nothing. Check the next day. Nothing. The next day, nothing. Waited again, went back, and they said, well, the medication requires uh, approval from the insurance. And I'm like, well, how much is the medication by itself? And she said, well, they were like, it was 600 bucks. I'm like, <laughs> y'all can go ahead and send that back to the doctor because I'm not paying it if the insurance is not going to pay it. Went to my family doctor. I told him the issue, and just like that, I had it, so... Don't know what the problem is. It may be um, kudos to his nurse, which is amazing, Danielle. Girl, you be on it. Um, but I got the medicine, and I've been taking it and looked online, and it said it could take four to eight weeks to really see any type of difference. So I'll wait and see there, but I still have the frequency and the pain. And, um, and what I've noticed now is it happens during the day so i don't have to be laying down and wake up and then have to go to the bathroom where i have that intense pain it's throughout the day like if i have to go to the bathroom and if i have to wait when the kids in the bathroom or something like that and i'd be like hurry up because not only do i have to go i have the pain so uh she also did a um vaginal um exam just to see if i have any type of tenderness or whatever and I did and then they said that could be an issue uh with um my bladder and kidney pains as well don't know how that's connected but hey she's supposed to be the expert um so you know I'll give it a minute but you know I won't be going back because I am having a change of scenery so I'm going to have to find some new doctors anyway. And maybe some new fresh eyes can give me a better perspective as to what's going on. And I probably have about five hours that I have that I have to get um, get replacements for, which is fine. Uh, maybe, like I said, I'll get some, some better results. Who knows? You know, it is what it is. So that's where I'm at there. So I'm still feeling the pain. Still feeling the discomfort. And I have been so tired lately. It has been ridiculous. But I must press on. Also, um, right quick. Nope, I'm going to save that, you know, because I don't want to have to keep, I don't want to cut videos and stuff like that. Um, that's just too much, you know, for my little brain. But anyway. That's just the update so far as far as the urologist appointment, guys. And, you know, wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a blessed day, good morning, a blessed morning, a good afternoon, a good evening, or good night. Until next time, I hope you have a good one. Bye.